Survival of Guyana's sugar industry depends on Skeldon Estate, one of the largest in the Caribbean. Being a cane cutter, it's physical, it's manual labor. You just have to endure, you have to persevere, and it's not an easy task. Many people are leaving the industry, migrating in search of new jobs. Labor has been a problem for us and it continues to be. The new method that came on board now is mechanized harvesting, where everything is fully mechanized. The CDB makes all this possible, funding bridges, roads, aqueducts, and fields that can support mechanized harvesting. Mechanization is not about displacing labor, it's about replacing or buffering for the shortage of labor. The estate faces a 35% drop in income through the loss of European markets. If sugar was to leave Guyana, then it's, um, it will be chaos. The industry in Guyana employs about 20,000 persons and supports over 100,000 people indirectly. Under the CDB, we've expanded 5,000 hectares. I depend on sugar, my family depends on sugar. Whatever I achieve in life, all my academic qualification is because of the sugar industry. And I see sugar has a future. I have a future. In Queenstown, people farm rice and ground provisions. They rely on the roads to get their goods in and out of the area. The people in Queenstown, they're very, very grateful for what was done by the Basic Trust in relation to these roads. The can rainfall can't walk on it. It was a loom road, okay? And it had big ditch. The potholes was a nightmare, and some of the bridges were not um, usable. One day I've been down, we gonna the CDB has helped build roads and bridges, making life easier for residents and commuters. The most useful road, um, used for this road is school children. People outside of the village, when they came in, uh, or they come in to, to drop off passengers, they, they used to be sucking the teeth and saying, you know, they'd stay to the roads and so on, but that's not so anymore. The new roads help keep the community connected. If you go down in another street, you see a church, and then we have a masjid, and then we have the temple. So all the religion is catered for in our village, and we live in unity. I would like to see us not for our race. I would like to see us for countrymen, for our people. The CDB, in partnership with the government of Guyana, has embarked on a community roads improvement program. It looks at the sustainability of the program and not just building a road for today, but ensuring that we can maintain it, that we have community involvement in, a, in the entire program so the community can take ownership and also getting feedback from them, which is very important. In some areas, they haven't had roads before. It was just mud dams, for example, the road that we're standing on right now. We ain't giving up no mountain. We ain't giving up no tree. Poor roads block access to essential services, like this health center in West Coast Demerara. Before, vehicles could not traverse in and out comfortable. 
because the road was in a deplorable state. However, since the road has been rehabilitated, persons can able access the road and services very easily. Not one blue sake. Before, children had to brave floods and roads that turned to mud in order to come to school. Now all that has changed as the CDB reconnects communities. The rivers in Guyana are used for business, recreation and transport. The CDB has funded improvements to key hubs along the water routes. <laughs> At Parika, a bustling waterfront exchange, the CDB has improved the wharf and surrounding roads. Large ferries go to Supernam Stelling, built with CDB funding. The Stelling can dock roll-on, roll-off vehicles, like trucks carrying cases of Guyanese goods. Boats also go to Bartica, a key source of Guyana's gold and precious stones. The CDB has helped upgrade the wharf, roads and the new market. With the advent of the upsurging mining and the price of gold on the market now, the world market, this town has grown. There are people who come from the riverine communities. There are a lot of little communities in the Majroni, Kayuni, and the Asukebo that comes here. And uh, we saw the need for a new market, a, a bigger market. We depend wholly and solely right now on what happens in the mining sector, the gold mining sector. There are plans to move toward ecotourism, but they need help to make that dream a reality. In terms of the true development, for me, we are still a far way off. <laughs> Haruru is an Amerindian reservation on the Burbies River. The CDB organized training in directional felling that helps minimize forest damage and ensures the safety of loggers. I got into logging because I was trained. We did occupation health and safety along with timber harvesting. And after I returned to the village, I decided to become a logger also. My family is involved in logging. Also, majority of the residents on the Huru Reservation are involved in logging. If we can't do logging, then I know for a fact many fathers would have to go out to the area to work. Our future in Huru would actually die right there. It wouldn't be having no shoots of nurses, doctors, and what our dreams are. Women are also involved in all the areas. Some are employed by BCGI, that's a bauxite company. Some are farmers and also some are loggers. You know, one day I get into the back down with my son and he been fell in a tree, you know, and like, oh, he said, run, mommy. I run, but in the same direction, the big tree fall, and I was just, woo. Loggers will normally come, they just cut down a tree, you know. They, they don't look around the area to see if another tree is there or to see which direction is going. They just used to come and cut down and damage other trees. And because of the training now, they are able to better understand how to fill. The CDB also offered training in IT and set up a computer lab with 15 computers at the village school. It's very important for all of us to learn new things, especially the computer. Because in this country, if you don't know about computer, you can't get like jobs. Huru is part of a nationwide IT skills training program funded by the CDB. We never ever know what is a computer. Today we have 
we touch, we feel, we hold, we use. We never ever had electricity here. Today we have. Change brings its own challenges. The seven mile area where Jean's family logs will soon be cleared to mine for bauxite. Whatever this community gets in whatever small way, we always share it. Seven mile would be going and we know somewhere long something else is in store for us. Blessing. Everybody dancing in Guyana. Oh, and they all say that's the way. Everybody dancing in Guyana. The Caribbean Development Bank and Guyana facing a changing future. Everybody dancing in Guyana.